Hi, this is Scott Sad. As often happens, I was not planning on doing a Sad Truth clip today. It's gorgeous outside. I wanted to relax a bit. But I wanted to share with you something that transpired uh, last night and then continued this morning. I was going through my Twitter feed and I saw a tweet from a professor of education. Uh, she's a specialist in decolonizing pedagogy. Uh, at York University. And so here's her tweet. Her name is Vidya Shah. I often get asked how to disrupt whiteness in leadership. My simple answer is to tell the truth and speak your truth. Whiteness institutionalizes lies, denials, and cover-ups and calls it, quote, protocol, professionalism, and conflict management. No. It's dishonesty. And so I went after her. I predicted that she would block me, and she did, and that she would either shut down her account or protect her tweets, and she did, uh, which, of course, begs the question, why would you, if, if you're so sure about your positions, if you are on the right side of the matter, if, if truth is on your side, then you never have to hide because you stand tall and proudly in defense of your principles, someone like me should be, you should be able to do away with very easily with your counter arguments. I won't read to you all of the stuff that I wrote in terms of tweets to her, but I did some digging on this person. And earlier today, I shared a clip. So this is an article that she wrote. Now, this is a professor, right? Think about, you know, Einstein was a professor, right? So there's Professor Einstein and there is Professor, professor Shaw who decolonizes whiteness and pedagogy. Uh, here is her article. In dash visible, they always, the postmodernists always do these weird dash things. So instead of just writing the word invisible, it's in slash visible person of color, POC, narratives of a brown professor in teacher education. I won't read you the whole thing because it's, it's, it's impossible. I mean, you'd lose your mind. It's in a journal called Cultural, Cultural Studies and then Arrows Both Ways, Critical Methodologies. I'm going to read you the abstract and then part of the conclusion. In this article, I reflect on experiences of brown or South Asian in slash visibility in teacher education using an auto ethnographic approach, I share reflexive personal and professional counter narratives of my experience as a brown person and brown teacher educator committed to issues of justice in the diverse context of Toronto, Canada. I explore how brown invisibility operates in desiring recognition, insider knowings, investments in ambiguity, and relational harm and liberation. I trouble the ways in which theoretical frames open and limit experiences and expressions of brownness, locating myself in between post-colonial and anti-colonial theorizing and notions of racial ambiguity in Desi Crit. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that means. Like literally it's Desi, D-E-S-I, decapitalized, and then tied to it, crit, desirable, critic, I don't know. So I'll read it again. Locating myself in between post-colonial and anti-colonial theorizing and notions of racial ambiguity in Desi crit. I conclude with the importance of making visible the experiences and constructions of brownness in faculties of education and education more broadly as a form of solidarity that both, both resists brown invisibility and exposes brown complicity in an aspirational whiteness that maintains racial hierarchies through its invisibility. That's the abstract, people. So try to imagine getting through 10 pages of this nonsense. So I'll just get to the conclusion. It's good. So the it ends with storying visibility 
as a brown professor in teacher education. Teacher education is new terrain for brown teacher educators. Right. I mean, there, there are no. Uh, my best friends at Cornell were some of my best friends, Rahul Guha, Enil Kahl, Abilash Dave, one of my top professors who taught me, you know, mathematical modeling and consumer choice, Pradeep Chintagunta. Brown people, Indian people were invisible at Cornell. So let's go on. Teacher education is new terrain for brown teacher educators. In many ways, brown teacher educators are creating the very spaces we crave, spaces we have only ever imagined while negotiating realities that are perpetually inhospitable and often harmful. I mean, I tell you, the harm that people in Canadian universities have to go through when they're getting their degrees I didn't know that because I see tons of brown people at my university and I didn't know they were all being harmed. I hold this newness in tension with the fact that as brown people, we come from histories, legacies, and geographies of resistance, of creativity, and of ingenuity. I find solace in the remembrance that we as brown people have been on this terrain before and found ways to force its adaptation to make space for us. As a brown teacher educator, my body and mind do not belong to me alone. They belong to generations past as honored legacies and generations to come as imaginings of future possibilities. This work crosses boundaries of the professional and personal as my activism in my home and community informs my work in the university. They co-constitute each other. As such, I am encouraged to sit in the questions. How might we honor experiences of invisibility and also name experiences of racial ambiguity and claims to racial status and a racial hierarchy in our personal and professional lives. How do we, as brown teachers and teacher educators, heal and resist while making space for a multiplicity of brown student experiences and the placement of these, <laughs> of these experiences in relation to other experiences of racism? In part, by the way, this brown person, I guess, grew up in Canada. I was in the Lebanese Civil War where I was getting going to be executed, you know, as a Jew. But I never wrote this kind of article. You know, I should write an autoethnography of real victimhood. But anyways, let's go on. In part, this requires making visible the racialization of brownness as resistance to white supremacy to honor our families, communities, ancestors, thinkers, poets, artists, and spiritual and religious leaders is to resist white supremacy. To explore the multiplicities and contradictions within and between brown communities is to resist white supremacy. To recognize the histories and contexts of how we became raced and how we continue to serve a racist agenda is to resist white supremacy by the way i deserve some kind of emmy oscar something for god's sakes i'm a professor and i'm a greater thespian than most of the bullshit hollywood actors let's go on the invisibility of brownness speaks to the necessity to make visible the ways in which brown people experience racialization and racism in a system designed to render their existence invisible as inherent to the model image. Making brownness visible also requires identifying the ways in which brownness is complicit in anti-blackness and white supremacy. This is not, this is a real academic article from a leading university, a professor at a leading Canadian university. It speaks to the necessity of a version of solidarity that does not require self slash collective brown erasure 
as we stand for black and indigenous lives. True solidarity requires that we deeply understand our own experiences with oppression, the ways in which we have internalized harmful messages at the intersection of colonialism, ca ca casteism, capitalism, anti-blackness, and white supremacy to create racial and other hierarchies. This form of solidarity, beginning with our own stories and suffering, allow us to allow us to act from a place of justice instead of guilt or shame oh, not shame shame chomoroy 2020 focusing on how our stories of oppression and liberation are and have been deeply intertwined as we struggle against the myriad of ways that white supremacy affects us all albeit differently Resistance also exists in learning about cross-racial solidarities that were silenced and collectively birthing new possibilities. There's a lot of genocide in Canada in the 21st century at York University. My goodness, I don't know that there was so much struggle. I mean, what I went through in the Lebanese Civil War is nothing compared to what this noble professor of color has gone through in Canada. I think about our responsibility as brown teachers and teacher educators to ourselves, to our histories, to our brown students, and to larger projects of racial justice. Our responsibility is to make visible what has intentionally been made invisible. First, teacher education in North America must make visible the diverse complex and diasporic realities of brown students as we consider intersections of race with ethnicity, class, class, caste, religion, and worldview, color, gender, language, accent, place of birth, sexuality, ability, <laughs> and the systems of oppression that pervert differences from hegemony and systems of power. This requires an increase in diasporic <laughs> representation of brown slash South Asian teacher educators and professors and pre-service teachers. It also requires that brown South Asian experiences are theorized in multiple ways to raise the racial consciousness of brown students, professors, and communities ag as agents of our own stories, our own learnings, learning, and our own futures. I got to tell you, as a myself, let me look at, look, I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm much darker than she is. As a Arabic Jew of color, child war refugee, Arabic Jew of color, Jew of color, uh, Arabic speaking war refugee of, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I am, I guess, gay, as you know, because my biological female wife self-identifies as male. So I also have that going for me. You can't beat me in victimology poker. I wholeheartedly support Professor Shaw for her courageous, principled, stance of color she has a moral compass of color she is an educator of brownness she is a mentor of brownness of color she's amazing think about all the professors throughout history all of the teachers the mentors that have trained millions of students in every possible field, whether it be in the study of Shakespeare or in art history or in neuroscience or in consumer psychology or in anthropology or in physics or in chemistry or in pure mathematics or in all kinds of intellectual endeavors that enrich the human spirit. Those endeavors are nothing compared to the autoethnography of brownness that this courageous moral person of color has shared with us 
why do I take time to do this? It's gorgeous outside. I could get on my stationary bike. Because this nonsense, this racist, openly racist nonsense has consequences. Our government is run by people who were taught by professors of color like this person. Our policies are being shaped by them. Our scientific policies are being shaped by those folks. Every day in university ecosystems, that's all you now see. So not only are your children, the ones that you are sending to university to have their minds enriched, to have them explore new intellectual landscapes, not only are they being cheated out of an education, but your money that you worked hard for is going to poison them with these, yes, parasitic mind, read it, to be parasitized by these idea pathogens. People, speak up, speak out, don't sit idly and let this nonsense continue to proliferate in our societies. It's grotesque, it's racist, it's hateful. It's bigoted, it's anti-science, it's anti-reason, it's anti-logic, it's anti-common sense, it's anti-human dignity, but yet it all passes every day in our universities under the cloak of progressive social justice. Uh, please make sure to pre-order a copy of The Sad Truth About Happiness, where I actually talk about how you can live a happy life and part of it comes from being inoculated against these parasitic ideas and uh, I recently uh, set up a subscription model on Twitter for six dollars a month you will get access to one-on-one -on -one interactions behind the scene footage when I go on shows I will be setting up Twitter spaces uh, only for subscribers it costs you for one latte a month uh, and many people have said, oh, we would love to support you if you were to do that. Well, I've done it. So please sign up. Let's get a huge community going. Imagine if I can, you know, open up Twitter spaces and deliver a lecture to hundreds, thousands of people at a time. Uh, yes, it's nice to be remunerated for one's time. But just the idea of being able to have an audience, a community of intellectually engaged people. Uh, would be a dream. So please consider subscribing. Uh, go to my Twitter bio and you can do so there. And as I said, I take the time to do this because it is my job to, to create knowledge, disseminate knowledge, to defend the truth. And having this kind of racist gibberish uh, masquerading as academic content, uh, if I didn't speak out against it, I would be inauthentic. Take care, everybody. Cheers.